Hi everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Under the uh, cover of the overhang in the sauna here, so as you can probably hear, it's raining pretty good outside today. Um, getting ready to head out on that canoe trip. And uh, checking the forecast, looks like it's going to be pretty warm for the upcoming week. Once this rain stops, it's supposed to clear up and get uh, into the mid-teens Celsius and sunny. So what that means, and actually the temperatures are only getting down to like 5 degrees Celsius at night. So what that means is probably bug season is imminent now. The hatching of the black flies first and then mos uh, followed by mosquitoes. Um, so, there's never a good time for it. Problem with uh, this delayed canoe trip, usually my first canoe trip of the season, I like to get out the first week or two of May. First week and a half, but today's May... Uh, 12th or 13th and uh, that means that by the end of my canoe trip that's going to be almost the end near the end of May which bugs will be out for sure black flies will have hatched um, so that has creates a couple of issues one is that it becomes more difficult to film because you've uh, probably seen some footage of my earlier videos from two three four years ago that uh, I tried to film in the spring on trips like that and the black flies just kind of swarm the camera lens because it's black, it attracts the bugs, and uh, just that there's so many in some places that they're just flying around. So it's hard to take a photograph, film I don't mind so much. But uh, the other issue is that, of course, it makes things a little bit more uncomfortable and means I need to wear extra clothing, extra gear. So I wanted to, on my other channel, I've uh, posted, and on my website I've posted videos and blog posts, uh, articles I've written about what I do in the spring to protect myself from in biting insects. The biggest issue, of course, in the outdoors seems to be right now as far as biting insects, um, at least something that's new to us here in Canada, is the tick, and specifically Lyme disease is the, uh, seems to be the main concern associated with tick bites, um, from the black-legged tick in particular. And in this region, where I am right here, I've heard of some cases uh, starting to creep up. They're starting to creep this far north and into this area. I've never seen a tick myself in, in this area. In fact, I've only ever seen a deer, uh, deer tick or a black-legged tick once in my life and that was a couple of years ago on a canoe trip down around uh, sort of central or eastern Ontario, south, southeastern Ontario. And that was on, uh, on Joe when we rode on a fall October canoe trip, camping trip. So a couple of um, main things to consider when trying to protect yourself against ticks in particular is to wear full clothing that's tight fitting especially down around your ankles if you can get a, a higher boot full sock and uh, either tape or somehow cinch your your pant leg down to your boot so that ticks can't climb up it that's probably going to be the most likely um, avenue for them to get onto your body and, and onto your skin is up you know, from the ground as you brush through grass and stuff like that. Uh, so that's w one of the main things is protecting yourself with clothing. The second thing is to use uh, insect repellents such as DEET which does kill them. Um, but if you don't like putting DEET on your skin or if you prefer to have sort of a clothing and, and repellent um, protocol then I suggest using permethrin. So I'm going to, at the end of this video, so second half of this video, I'm going to actually just upload into this video some content that I filmed last year um, here, and then maybe even the footage or the photographs and article that I wrote three or four years ago on how to treat your clothing with, with permethrin in order to repel bugs. I have found it to be effective against mosquitoes and black flies as well. So that's actually the main reason that I use it and why I impregnate my clothing that I'm using on these trips with permethrin. So permethrin is the man-made version of something naturally occurring in nature that repels or kills bugs, especially things like ticks and lice. Perethrin, which is derived from a couple of species of chrysanthemums. So those fall mums that uh, are popular in, in uh, garden centers in the fall because they're hardy plants that you can put out in the fall that aren't going to get killed by frost. Uh, they have a multi multitude of colors. Um, those a species of, of that chrysanthemum, or two of them actually, uh, provide a 
pyrethrin, pyrethrin, which is the natural occurring substance from that, that actually is an effective lysentic killer and repellent. So uh, the problem with the natural version is that it washes out easily and it's broken down by sunlight and water uh, quite quickly, so you have to keep reapplying it. Uh, permethrin bind, binds uh, very well to clothing and to pet fur so for that reason it's often used on uh, livestock pets and clothing now in the u.s you can buy clothing that's pre-soaked in permethrin that's um, heated up and bound to the clothing to the to the fibers in the clothing so it lasts a really long time here in Canada, it's not available uh, that way. You have to buy essentially the agricultural version uh, for livestock and then uh, dilute it to the right concentration that's safe to apply to your clothing. So that's what the article that I wrote on my website uh, describes how to do is how to dilute it to the right um, concentration to make it safe. And then you soak your clothing in it and that, um, and then you soak your clothing in it and that's and then it's good for quite a number of washes actually. Once it dries, it, it's bound pretty tight. And it, because it's bound tightly to the fabric, it doesn't come off on your skin. So it's a very low risk. Now, don't absolutely quote me on that and, and look into, do the research yourself on to the uh, safety and the effectiveness of, of permethrin or of the natural permethrin to see if it works for you. And then of course you have to make your own judgment whether you think the risk is worth the, um, the use of it or whether you think the risk of Lyme disease is greater or other diseases carried by biting insects. Um, I, I find to me research I've done I feel that the risk from permethrin is much lower than the risk from these biting insects. Oh, and another thing I do get a lot of questions emailed to me usually for some reason about uh, how I protect Callie from ticks. Again I have never seen a tick on her but quite likely she has had them on her her first too long to check her effectively so pretty well impossible to detect them uh, but what we do once it warms up so starting last month we give her next guard which is a flea and tick uh, repellent and killer so it does effectively protect her from ticks and we'll maintain that once a month pill up until November when the weather turns cold enough that the ticks are no longer active so hope that helps you if you're interested just look that up it uh, comes at a bit of an expense and a bit of a nuisance for me to get that from a vet but um, not too big a deal and it's effective so I'm not willing to take that chance with her either and if you are interested of course in seeing how I do it exactly then then uh, either click on the link in the description below to go to the website or watch the second half of this video and also possibly go to the website to get exact instructions Okay, so I brought five gallons of water up from the stream. This is a five gallon pail, which is 20 liters. I want to reduce that to, uh, what am I putting? I'm going to do pants, socks, hat, shirt, maybe two shirts. So I want, uh, I could probably get away with just five liters. If you have latex gloves, then put those on. I don't have any here. I have these uh, neoprene or latex impregnated cloth gloves. So I'll just have to be careful not to get it in its concentrated form on the back of my hands here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the whole thing in there. So I actually should be wearing glasses too. All right, just gonna pour this in. Gotta make sure she doesn't go anywhere near, near this other pail. So I'll, I'll put a lid on this as soon as I get the clothing soaked in it. So you notice the Water here has got a lot of tannin in it, which of course any stream or lake that uh, has leaves falling in it, 
branches and stuff like that it's gonna have a lot of tan and so that's that brown color that tea stain you'd want to be careful if you were doing any white clothing up here not to stain your clothing but um, it's that tannin that's used for tanning hide so when I make uh, so when I tan a, a moose hide or a bear hide or a deer hide or a small game hide I'll actually use uh, tannin water sometimes just really concentrated and I found the most effective way to do that was with oak bark so so I'd take a big plastic garbage can fill that with water and fill it with as many uh, uh, oak uh, bark pieces as possible let that sit can't remember when the last time it did it how long I let it sit but you'll notice that the water gets really really dark and then you can take a hide that's been scraped down properly and soak it in that so I'm not sure how good it is for you, but I run this water through the Berkey water filter inside for drinking and everything else. I just boil it to wash dishes and do stuff like that, but I'm not going to ingest it. It's not necessary. I drink uh, water straight from the lake or filtered uh, or boiled from the lake all the time on my outdoor trips. Good time and the bugs are really bad right now. Range is stopping, it's starting to warm up a little bit, so they're gonna get bad for a while, then they'll disappear once the heat of the day starts. And let this soak for up to two hours, so at least an hour. We'll get a clothesline going here and then I'll pull it out and uh, let it drip dry. So stick it in the outhouse so that Callie can't get at it. So another thing about bugs is that they are attracted to dark colors. So you'll notice that I usually wear this type of thing during bug season. This is just a regular branded, uh, you know, outdoor brand fishing shirt, basically. So, you know, with all the venting in the back and a uh, collar that flips up, which I keep up a lot of the times on the back of my neck, uh, long sleeves that can be rolled up and tucked in. To make it a short sleeve shirt, uh, problem with that is when you're out in the water, you get burned on your, your forearms and your hands. So it's helpful to have a long shirt covering your full body, but that it's so light in material weight as well as color that it doesn't overheat. But really good test is to stand beside somebody. You wear this and somebody else wears a dark, like especially black or dark blue garment. And you'll see all the bugs accumulating on them and 
and avoiding you. They'll go straight to that black first. So hats included. So I always wear my lightest hat during bug season. This is my oldest Tilly probably and my lightest color one. And not only is it light in color, but it's a lightweight breathable fabric with lots of venting so I don't overheat on the water. And when I do get overheated, I just scoop it in the water and put it on my head. This I also soaked in permethrin. So what'll happen if the bugs land on that, they'll either die or they'll quickly take off because they don't like the smell or the uh, taste of it. So very effective. Now, sometimes I'll also put a, a sort of a two-sided uh, sticky tape on the back of this hat. Deer flies and horse flies tend to circle and then they land on the back of your head because they know where your predator eyes are. And when they do that and they uh, land on that sticky tape, then they get stuck to it and you can remove them later instead of having them continue to search until they find some vulnerable skin somewhere. So light clothing is absolutely essential to uh, avoid bugs or to uh, lessen the impact of biting insects in the spring. So all these layers are now soaked with permethrin. So I've got my shirt, my hat, pants and socks. Um, so anything that lands on me will either be repelled or die. It doesn't act like a repellent in that it smells and that it turns them off and they don't land on you. But when they do land on you, they uh, immediately, I don't know what happens exactly, but they don't bite through because they are impacted by the permethrin before they get a chance to, to bite through my clothing. So I'm finding that they're effective with um, those stable flies or whatever they are that we seem to have around here now. We didn't have years ago. So it looks like a house fly, but it bites just like a deer fly. We have deer flies, horse flies, mosquitoes, um, no CMs are, I think, somewhat um, similar to, I guess, a midge from the UK. And uh, did I say mosquitoes and black flies? So predominantly the things I'm most concerned about are mosquitoes and black flies. So I find this quite an effective repellent or deterrent from uh, to those bugs. So, so, so far this spring, it hasn't been all that bad. That last video, there was a couple of scenes that Kelly was covered in mosquitoes and I had a bunch of mosquitoes buzzing around me. I've had the smudge fires going, but overall, especially during the day, they haven't been that bad. Um, but over the last few days, we had that rain that you saw and now some warm sunny days. So the bugs are breeding like crazy in the route, even in the middle of the day right now. So it's a little bit uncomfortable, but things like this permethrin soaked clothing, the bug jacket, the smoky fire, um, uh, and DEET uh, based, DEET or citronella based bug repellents on my skin. But I guess I've built up a tolerance, uh, spending so much time outside, so they don't affect me as much. I don't really swell up or react to the bug bites. You know, the odd one I might, but typically I don't. Um, so therefore I'm not as panicked about them. And the panic is what raises your, your uh, perspiration and then your uh, carbon dioxide emission, which is what the bugs are attracted to. So it pays to stay calm, but I mean, that's just the reality of the life in the, in the woods. And I'd rather, like I said in other videos, deal with bugs because the environment is pristine and clean enough for the bugs to survive in, rather than the city or suburban environments where the water's polluted and there's not enough forest cover, so therefore the bugs can't survive. So that's the trade-off. So if you want more information on uh, Permether and how to dilute it to the proper concentration, and where to get it, then refer back to the website. I'll provide the link up here and also in the description below. It'll take you to the website, the article I wrote two or three years ago that explains all of that for you. So as the summer progresses and the temperatures get warmer and the bush starts drying out and the little streams and everything start drying out, the insects stop breeding. So bugs get better and better as the season goes on. So really it's a month or two of, of dealing with this and then we're back to a nice conditions. So anyway, I better get back to work here. Appreciate you following along. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you check in every Friday to watch me doing stuff here at the cabin. So have a great week. Take care. I'll see you up at the cabin next time.